I'm Emily Noble, and we are in the kitchen at Heartland Restaurant, right across the street from the St. Paul Farmer's Market, where Chef Lenny Russo is going to show us how to prepare a delicious fish dish, right? This it's is, fish. It's fish? Mm -hmm. Last I checked. <laughs> and it's local? It's from uh, Lake Superior. What I want to show you first is how to make this sauce. Now, what we have here are some, some shell peas, also known as English peas. And again, these are um, a product of Minnesota. And um, what's great about, um, about peas right now is spring and the sweetness of them. And so we try and use them for as long as we can. Those are big peas. They are big peas. Um, what's, so what we did with these is we, we shelled them, obviously, and then we cooked them in uh, salted water, blanched them, and shocked them in ice water. Um, the, uh, to preserve the green chlorophyll, just to keep the peas nice and green. If you don't do that, they're gonna turn brown. So uh, this, uh, this is a really simple sauce. This sauce can be served uh, cold, it can be served at room temperature, or you can heat it up. It's, it's entirely up to you. So, so first thing we're gonna do is we're going to add the peas to a blender, or you can do this in a food processor as well but this is a high-speed blender. And uh, we have some, we have some vegetable stock. What, what was the other name you called that? It's a, a court bouillon, it's a French. The, uh, the chefs in the uh, French courts uh, called it uh, bouillon. They, and then it got the name court bouillon because uh, they used it to poach fish primarily, other meats. Um, but really, it's fresh vegetable stock. We, ser we sell all of this in our, in our market. You can substitute a canned variety from the grocery store. I recommend a zero sodium or very low sodium vegetable broth if you're gonna do that. So now you make that broth from local vegetables as well? We do. From, uh, that's a pretty simple recipe, celery, carrots, onion, garlic, fennel. A uh, little uh, bouquet garni of uh, fresh spices and a little white wine, and it takes uh, it takes a couple hours and it's done. Um, anyway, so we what we have right now is we have the vegetable stock and we have the peas in the blender. Now we're also going to add some fresh mint, and we're going to add some fresh flat leaf parsley. Again from. This is Minnesota product, but Minnesota product as far as my vegetable garden at home. So, um, so at any rate, uh, this is when you want to season it. Now, the reason why you want to put your salt in now, in a couple of pinches of uh, sea salt, and we're going to use some white pepper and not black pepper. And the reason we're doing that is because the white pepper will not show up in the sauce. If you use black pepper, you'll have little specks of black in your sauce and white pepper dissolves more easily. White pepper and black pepper are the same pepper. Oh. White pepper corns are just black pepper corns where the shell has been removed. So it's a little bit spicier, so you have to be a little bit uh, more judicious in the way you use it. Okay. So I didn't know that. We put the salt in now because what we're gonna do to finish this is we're gonna add some of this sunflower oil to it. And you can also use grapeseed oil, which is another very high burn temp oil. But <clears throat> salt does not dissolve in oil. So if you want the salt to be distributed evenly through the dish, you have to make sure you put it in with the liquid ingredients and leave the oil out until the end. All right, so we, <clears throat> what you do is try and get it, try and get it started. Open it up if it's not completely pureed. <clears throat> You said this works in a food processor as well? This will work in a food pr processor. Mm. All right, so now I'm confident that the salt has been dissolved. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take off the top of this blend. We're going to leave this part on. We're going to take this off. And we're going <clears> to <throat> turn this on. We're going to slowly add the oil. This is an emulsification process, so what we're doing is we're blending this oil in slowly.
All so right. what was the inspiration behind this recipe? Um, Spring? Yeah, peas. <laughs> peas. I love peas. I grew up eating a lot of peas. Um, I grew up in an Italian family and, and having pasta con piselli, which, which, which are peas, uh, was a very uh, popular dish when I was a kid. All right, so, so we're going to taste this and see if we need a little bit of extra seasoning. That's perfect. All right, so now we're going to cook the fish. All right. All right, so this particular fish, we dusted in a little bit of cornmeal. Now, what we have here is a, it's seasoned with, um, with salt and black pepper. And we're going to just kind of shake off the excess. Oh, we, use, we use a combination of two different types of cornmeal. One is a coarse cornmeal, and, and one is a fine cornmeal. Now, the idea being that the fine cornmeal sticks very well to the fish, and the coarse cornmeal gives us the texture that we want, so we do a combination of both. So you don't actually have to flour the fish first or dip it no. in egg or anything? Nope, nope. And, and this is great That's for brilliant. people who have a gluten intolerance because most people with gluten intolerance can eat corn. So if you're gluten intolerant and you'd like to put a nice crust on your fish, I suggest using cornmeal. Um, really brilliant. This is Lake Cisco which the Scandinavians like to call herring. Oh, okay. So it looks like a herring, but it's not a herring. <laughs> it's a salmonoid. Uh, so it's in the same family as lake trout, whitefish, uh, rainbow trout, salmon, um, and all the other salmonoids. So it's, um, it's very high in omega-3 fatty acids, really good for you. Uh, so, uh, so what we want to do with this fish is we want to uh, pan fry it. And we're going to do that uh, in a combination of some of the sunflower oil and some of this high fat butter. Is that just so the butter doesn't burn or? You are very smart. Yes, what we're doing is we're, by using this, we raise the burn temperature. That allows us to put sol whole butter where, the, where the, uh, the butter solids are still in it. It hasn't been clarified. It allows us to put it in the pan without having it burn. So it raises the burn temperature. Okay, so that's the idea behind that. Um, but the butter is giving us a little extra richness uh, combined with the sunflower oil for the flavor that we're looking for. So you don't need a lot. So we just take a little bit of butter. You want to put the oil in first. You can see that it's already smoking. So the pan, you notice I put it in a hot pan. And then we put our fish in. Now this this is a this is a stainless steel pan, and and it has a um, has an aluminum core. Stainless steel is a non-reactive metal, so you can put any sort of acid in here, and it won't react with it. Um, Aluminum will react with acid, whether it be citric acid or lactic acid, lactic acid, which you would find in cream. And so that'll impart an unusual flavor. So what, we're, what we want to do, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're not getting any off-putting flavors. So we have this stainless steel pan, but it has an aluminum core. And the reason it has an aluminum core is because Aluminum conducts heat really well, um, and stainless does not. So how can you tell when it's done? Oh, well, I can tell by touch because it's very firm. Um, if, if, you're, if you like your fish cooked all the way through, I suggest um, not cooking it all the way through in the pan, but finishing it for a few seconds in the oven. Well, a few seconds, more like a, about two minutes in the oven. This fish is very, very fast because it's so thin, and the pan was nice and hot. But you can see by looking inside that the color has changed. And so this fish is pretty well done. I'm gonna make sure the bottom is nice and done. Yep, bottom is nice and done. With the heat off? Yes, the heat is off, the pan is still hot. Okay, okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a bowl here, a little serving plate. We're gonna prepare our garnish for this dish, which these are uh, some really beautiful uh, microgreens um, from one of our farmers uh, here in town. Um, it's a 
a very a variety of different types of sprouts. I can see there's chard in here and there's some beet sprouts and it looks like there's a little bit of dill and, um, and some other uh, mustards. So a combination of sweet and, and uh, bitter and, um, and spicy greens, which, which makes a really good combination. So the, are the baby mustards as spicy as the adult no. mustards? No, they aren't. They're, they're gonna be pretty mild. Oh, good. We're gonna use again a little bit, we're gonna dress this with just a little bit and I encourage you not to overdress your, your greens. Oops. This, so a little bit of the sunflower oil. And then we have here, it, we, we ferment our own vinegar here in house. Really? So this is a little white wine vinegar that we fermented here in house. Um, Can we buy that vinegar in your market? Unfortunately not. Um, it takes about six months to ferment it. And um, we can't really keep up with our own needs. We actually have to supplement a little bit. but. So here's a little bit of uh, dressed greens. We're gonna season that with a little sea salt and a little black pepper. So that's, that's ready to go. And now we're just gonna take a little bit of the sauce, pour that in the bottom of the bowl, grab your fish, Let's do this. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. It's like it's swimming. Yeah, it's a nice, really, it's a really pretty dish and, and really good for you. And we'll put a little bit of these greens on top. Those high omega-3 fatty acids. Yes. The local sunflower oil. Yes, and all of this stuff is sustainably raised or certified organically grown. So um, all of those things are really important. It's not just about sustaining the, uh, the environment, it's also about sustaining the people who live on it, which is why we um, purchase locally. We think it's very important to sustain our local farmers. So, so all of this has been um, environmentally friendly in preparation, it's very helpful. So we have certain standards for healthfulness, for sustainability, for humanity and the way that the animals are being raised and also um, uh, for the uh, locale itself. So I am going to um, give you a fork. That is just Ladies beautiful. Ladies first. Fantastic. Now you eat the skin yes. and everything. Yep, yes? eat the skin that's and everything. That's important? Yep. That's the high, highest in omega-3s, right? It is, that's correct. Mm. Wow, that was just like warm nurturing goodness and what's nice about the little greens and and since this sauce itself is actually at room temperature oh. is that you get a good contrast of heat you know temperature contrast about the heat and and the and the cold it's so smooth <sighs> and comforting mm -hmm. i'm just gonna enjoy excuse me <laughs> mm. that came out better than i thought it was oh it was fantastic yeah, yeah it's pretty good <laughs> mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Chef. No, oh, my pleasure. This is amazing. My pleasure. The pleasure is all mine, I assure you. Thank you for joining us. Um, stop by the St. Paul Farmer's Market this weekend. Buy some local ingredients, some peas, some mint, uh, microgreens. Go home and try this for yourselves. And until next time, eat good food.